Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. Here we are. It is January 24th, 2018. You are watching the Theo Knight video. We're going to start this evening by looking here at the NASDAQ futures. You know, on an intraday basis, this chart might not look like too much, but uh, wow, you know, you have to stand back and really kind of appreciate some of the volatility that we are seeing over here. People we're looking at beyond a hundred point range from high to low inside of the NASDAQ future. So one of the themes, obviously, of today's trade, we're, we're seeing an expansion of that volatility. Much of the volatility that was sparked today, whether you're looking at the S&P futures or the NASDAQ futures, much of the volatility that's being sparked specifically in equity and index markets I attribute to some of the comments that actually came from the Treasury Secretary. Now, if you if you do not look at the dollar, well, we're going to take a brief look at the dollar and show some of the implications that the dollar is having upon the marketplace. Again, what we're looking at is dollar sign D X Y. And we're going to take this back right now. We're going to look at a five year weekly just to uh, broaden our horizons a little bit. <clears throat> so for the most part, we're starting to get into, well, uncharted territory inside of the dollar. The dollar <clears throat> ultimately breaks not just the 92 level, <clears throat> which ultimately it's held a tremendous amount of time as uh, kind of the line in the sand over there, but uh, we fully cracked all the way ultimately through the 90 handle. Now, is it all over for the dollar? Are we gonna see you know continued dollar weakness down here into the low or even mid 80s? That is to be seen. Again, the comments out of the Treasury Secretary over in Switzerland, okay, in the Davos conference, really sparked the sell side activity inside of the dollar. And again, this had implications all over the marketplace, but is there going to be continuation in the next few days? This is exactly what you want to look for inside of the marketplace, because again, the implications over here could be devastating to certain marketplaces and devastating both on the upside and the downside. And that's exactly what I'm going to come to here. So again, the dollar breaks down all right, in just the next couple of days, hey, could it pop back up into the 92 handle? You know, all is well, we're gonna be okay, great, no problem. Nevertheless, uh, the sell side activity in the dollar. Let me start with some of the commodity products, specifically gold. So when you're starting to look at some of the metals, you know, gold, uh, when you're starting to talk about some of the commodity products, again, oil, they're going to explode higher over here. What you're looking at in gold right now happens to be a five-year weekly, but gold is effectively a futures contract. So uh, when you look at futures contracts, it's very important to adjust that futures contract for possible roles. So adjust for contract changes, which are some of the roles in the futures contract. What I want you to see inside of the gold contract here is that we are you know, over the last five years, okay, possibly breaking out of a base. It's the inverse of what we just saw inside of the dollar and precisely the way it effectively should be. So if that dollar continues to break lower, you've actually got a clean shot of gold up to the 1500 or even 1600 level. And this could happen very, very rapidly. Again, the sell side activity in the dollar is, is really just permeating throughout the markets. Now, the commodities, I think, are kind of the obvious over here. You know, we could take a detailed look in oil, but hey, newsflash, oil kind of already broke out of its base in and around 50. Again, we're back into the mid-60 territory, but you think about this, a weaker dollar could continue to drive oil to the upside. All right, <clears throat> but I want to switch gears for just a moment, and I want to get to a little bit more, if you will, the obscure about the dollar. And the sell-side activity in the dollar can actually have some implications over to the bond market. <laughs> and the bond market, we all know, well, it's been driving a lot of what goes on inside of the equity markets. So here we're looking at the ZB and the bonds continue to sell off. And today they also sell off based on this news, the weaker dollar over there. You know, when you're going out, if you're, uh, if you're a sovereignty like China, <clears throat> you go out and you buy US treasuries, okay? Well, those treasuries, they're not as appealing when the U.S. dollar is starting to weaken. You know, when the U.S. dollar is weak, 
the way, everybody in the U.S. government secretly loves this. Why do they love it? <laughs> Makes goods, okay? And uh, U.S. products, well, cheaper versus, again, currencies around the world. There's other implications of it, well, including like there's $20 trillion of debt. $20 trillion of debt doesn't look so bad in a weaker dollar. Nevertheless, there's some negative implications if you're a sovereignty like China in holding U.S. treasuries. They might want to bail out of that. And as they do bail out of those treasuries, you'll look at things like TNX. Uh, TNX is the 10-year uh, associated interest rate. Yeah, look at this. I mean, we're approaching almost a 2.7% on the 10-year. I mean, this is getting a little bit scary. This is the thing that influences mortgages, you know, and it is. It's, it's getting at least scary to me because at what point does the interest rates exploding higher really start to slam the brakes on the economy. I mean, you have to assume the Fed, the Fed is just incredibly behind the curve as they typically are. Nevertheless, okay, what the market is doing right now is again, right, like the interest rates are flying up. The TNX, which is the 10 year is probably getting ahead of the Fed at this point. Speaking of which, Janet Yellen, bye-bye, Jerome Powell, Welcome. We'll have to come up with a nickname for him shortly. Nevertheless, the rise of interest rates has been substantiating the S&Ps along with the monsters of tech. But when I say substantiating the S&Ps specifically today, the S&Ps saw some big, ugly sell side activity. Let's go actually to some intraday trade. You're getting big, ugly sell side activity. Things started getting a little scary in the S&Ps, you know, at one point they were only down 12, 13 points and they bounced. But again, the range was fairly magnificent. What saved, <coughs> what ultimately saved the markets today was very specific, it was inside of the financials. And that's again, why? Because as the treasuries start to sell off over there, everybody seems right now in the financials to love. And by the way, they're exploding these things up here towards the, uh, towards today's close again we're doing this with the markets open you can see the financials ripping higher as again we're coming closer to the close the financials have been substantiating the s p futures so today's a perfect example where uh, apple facebook okay google even amazon have been down on the day nasdaq futures are off 22 how could the s p's possibly be up five well, it's because the financials are flying. They're up nine tenths of a percent here into the close. And again, the higher interest rates. But there is a snapping point onto which interest rates can start to maybe hit that 3% level and it would snap back and have <coughs> effects to the rest of the marketplace, negative effects to the marketplace in a rising interest rate environment. Specifically, it starts in things like housing stock. So if you've been following us for a while here, you know, we've been looking at things like XHB, has there been any break in XHB? No, but it's stalled out. And again, today, oh, forming the infamous Doji Star. I'm really not into technicals, but I enjoy saying Doji Star. Nevertheless, it has not, at this point in time, okay, on a rising interest rate environment, had negative implications to the home builders over there. And that's one that is just baffling many, many traders. All right. With the increased volatility, and I want to switch gears for just a moment, we tend to look at the SPX and the expected moves. Here we are on Wednesday. <clears throat> We've clipped right to the edge of the expected move for the week. Now, for those of you that do not remember, the expected move this week, and I'll kind of box it out over here, that's the move that was anticipated. Again, we look at on a Saturday, the expected move was right around $31. If you don't remember, cruise over here to the Analyze tab briefly, okay? And all I did is I just backed up the date to Saturday, and I'll show you, it's about a 31, almost $32 expected move. Now again, the markets exploded higher out of the gate this morning and came back in. But what is interesting is we come right into the closing bell here in the next 10 minutes. People, if you're not into expected move, you need to get into expected move because that line that was drawn on your screen, which is right here, okay? You can see the exact okay date that we drew this, everything, all right? This was there from Saturday and it's, it's the line that is literally the market 
is skimming along over here being the expected move, right? So keep that in mind as this is a level that clearly you could trade off of for the rest of the week and you could trade off of on an intraday basis, right? So that line happening to be precisely where the market is right now, which is 28.42 on the S&Ps. One last interesting area. You know, I started off by looking at the NASDAQ futures, which, by the way, okay, if you're watching them, they're flying around right now. The NASDAQ futures are moving in two and even four point increments, okay, in the last few minutes. Like they're literally bouncing around several points, okay, at a minute's notice. Now, there's been an expansion of volatility. And one interesting thing to me is if you look at the expected move that's left in the market for the remainder of the week. So we just have Thursday and Friday of this week. We still have over a $20 expected move. This is big leagues kind of stuff. Now, listen, the volatility here is still sitting at 10.6%. Okay. However, in comparison to most recent weeks, and for those of you that do tune in on a day-to-day -day basis here or a week-to-week -week basis, <coughs> most entire trading weeks recently have had right around a 22 point expected move for the entire trading week. Well, guess what? Here we are with only two days remaining to expiration. Okay. And we're displaying a little bit of risk. We have almost a $21 expected move for the next two trading sessions. Whereas just a few weeks ago, we had a $22 expected move for the entire week. I want to thank everybody here for joining us at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.